Um, I'm Keith Nixon Jr. Um, I am a filmmaker. Um, I'm a cinematographer. I direct. I'm a, a novice writer. I like to write. Um, and yeah, that's that's essentially what I do. Um, I'm from Virginia. Um, and I am coming by way of, I'm currently in San Diego. I've been in LA the last two years where I was attending the American uh, Institute. Right on. Yeah. At the AFI. That's awesome. So yes. San Diego, that's yes. beautiful, man. Yeah. I used to live out there. What, what brought you out to San Diego now? Really? Um, so a couple of things. Um, when I moved to uh, the West Coast, uh, my girlfriend actually moved as well. Um, she's a acting MFA major at UCSD. Um, and their program is two and a half years or so. Um, so with AFI ending um, in this past August and I, I graduated into a strike, um, there weren't a ton of opportunities, uh, but um, it was a little bit easier for us to kind of just come together for these remaining nine months or so. She'll be finished in March um, of next year. So I'm just buying some time in San Diego until we plot our next steps where we'll probably eventually end up at, back in L.A. or New York. That's beautiful, brother. Well, not a bad place to kind of hang out and get it together. Yeah, not at all. Um, I'm fortunate that I got a job at her university. Um, so it's 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 been nice, uh, you know, just kind of, again, hanging here. It's just a beautiful city, uh, plenty of good food. Um, it's easy to get around, not as not as difficult as LA. So uh, yeah, it's, it's been cool so far. Like I said, we're in this, we've been in this space about a week or so. Uh, but I, I made many trips down here. You know, when I could at the AFI, um, I made trips to San Diego and kind of fell in love with the city a little bit. So it's temporary holding, but like you said, not a bad place to to be kind of in a holding space. Yeah, and UCSD and La Jolla, I mean La Jolla, Jewel, man, Jewel. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, and it's interesting you talk about a little bit about your job post AFI, but we'll get into that. So thanks for sharing a little bit about who you are and what you do. You know, the our audience that we're going to be talking to here are essentially people that are looking to pursue film school as a career path. Uh, and also people such as yourself right now who have just graduated and they're heading off into the industry and trying to give them some words of advice and encouragement or just their people's authentic stories. So that way it can kind of propel them and drive them to stay in, stay with it. So that way they can manifest that dream that really inspired them since they got started. So, you know, I just wanted to give you a little yeah. background on who will be, who's going to be kind of watching this and listening to who our audience is. And so why don't you, why don't you explain a little bit about who you were as a kid and, or when, when did you finally decide that, you know what, I'm going to go to film school? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, and again, thank you for having me and 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 allowing me the space. Um, you know, I I tell people uh, that you know, as with all of us, my my journey to this point was a little bit of like misdirection, course correction, uh, redirection. Um, so as a kid, um, I had I had creative interests. Um, I used to draw a little bit, um, as most kids did, but um, it was something that I I. I thought I would seriously pursue. Um, I was in gifted art programs. Um, I went to a very small, um, just a small local school um, in central Virginia, um, but I was fortunate enough to be part of gifted programs there. Um, but as with most, uh, not most, with a lot of people in um, kind of middle America, we'll say, um, I, I was geared in the interest of safety and security, um, you know, and I started pursue, to pursue my more uh, STEM-based uh, creative, I mean, not creative inclinations, but STEM inclinations, um, science, technology, engineering, math, for those that don't know. Um, so I actually was fortunate enough to go to a magnet school. Um, it served about 13 counties, very small community, um, 350 students. And we had majors, um, you know, visual arts, instrumental music, uh, creative writing. Um, but I actually went for technology. Um, although I thought I would go for visual arts, I went for technology. Um, and that kind of set me on a path um, where I continued to pursue um, STEM-based careers. Um, so I actually ended up in undergrad at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, I ended up there for mechanical engineering. Um, 
And, you know, I thought it was something that I wanted to pursue, um, kind of charted out a path um, that I could take in doing so. Um, and about two years in, I realized I did not like it. Um, you know, engineering uh, for me, uh, as most people know, it is kind of this coming together of science, math, critical thinking, um, problem solving. I could do the problem solving and the critical thinking very well. Um, didn't have as much interest in the math and science. You know, um, I know that I could have done it, um, but it would require a little bit more of me than I was willing to give at that point in my life. Uh, so I, I kind of figured it out. I kind of figured out a way to to, to finesse it, I guess you could say. Um, but at the time I picked up a camera, uh, my sister is 14 months younger than me. And she also went to ODU and she started a style blog. And just by virtue of the fact we were always together, I became her de facto uh, photographer. Uh, sometimes I joke that I was her paparazzo. Um, and I would just take pictures for her uh, on, a, on occasion. Uh, and initially I, I, I had a, a strong disinterest. I, I didn't really care for it. Um, felt like it was a waste of time. But the more I began to explore uh, the camera, it started to get pictures that resonated with me and I started to develop taste, style, preference. Um, I think the bug bit me. Um, and so uh, I, I worked, uh, it kind of overlapped with my undergrad um, experience, but I worked corporate for six years. And I did uh, three years at a natural gas company and then three years at a, at, a, at a broader energy company. The first three years, I always tell people I taught myself photography. I would go to work every day. And uh, in my downtime, I would just read. Um, I would even take walks on my break and, you know, do a little street photography. If you could say that in Richmond, Virginia, it's a, we always say Richmond is a, a, a big town, small city. So it wasn't much street photography, but I would just try to get familiar with my camera. Um, I was reading, I was writing. Um, and then the, the, the second, uh, my second tenure at an energy company, um, I started to explore my interest in film. Mm -hmm. And the more I started to understand myself, I realized that this was a conversation I had kind of been engaging with already. Um, so much of my childhood was marked by my experiences in uh, cinema. Um, you know, my family and I, we would go to the movies often. We would go to Blockbuster, get you know, 10 movies for the weekend. And and that was kind of how we enjoyed ourselves. Um, I remember going to Redbox. Um, I, I feel like I was probably the first person in my high school that had Netflix. Um, I, I actually watched movies at school. Uh, I think this was prior to like <laughs> firewalls and people kind of understanding what Netflix was about. Um, and so it was something that, you know, I could, I could pinpoint movies that I watched with this family member and that family member and how it, you know, kind of resonated with me. And so I'm, you know, mid twenties or so, these things are starting to come back to me and I'm, I'm, you know, engaging with the camera as well. And, um, and doing so in my reading, my research, I came across names such as Bradford Young and uh, Arthur Jaffa and Malik Saeed and the, the commonality, the through line with these individuals beyond being brilliant black filmmakers was Howard University. And so I decided that, rather than trying to juggle my creative interests with this kind of corporate, um, you know, uh, lifestyle that I was starting to cultivate, you know, I felt that I was better served devoting myself purely to one. Um, and obviously that one was, was uh, filmmaking. And so I applied to a handful of grad programs um, and I got into Howard University on very short notice um, but I knew it was something that I needed to do. Um, I actually quit my job on about a week's notice. Um, and yeah, and, you know, I I was in Virginia, which Howard is in D.C., Washington, D.C., about two hours north of where I grew up. Um, so I started, you know, uh, August 21st of 2020. Uh, I'm sorry, of 2018. And um, immediately, you know, I felt like I made the right decision at no point that uh, I regret, you know, kind of this like quick transition because I think it was something that was already kind of in the works or something that was already um, on my heart. Um, so I was at Howard University for uh, a year and a half. Um, and during this period though, uh, my mother was sick. Um, she actually was diagnosed in leuke with leukemia in 2018. 
maybe six months prior to uh, this kind of transition. Um, and, you know, I, I, I started school with her blessing. You know, she she encouraged me to go. She was very supportive. Um, and, you know, at no point did I think that, you know, it would become that that her illness would take the course that it did. And unfortunately, at the end of 2019, she passed. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I decided to take the semester off going into 2020. Um, but little did I know that, you know, three months into 2020, all of us would be kind of shut down. Um, so, you know, despite the unfortunate circumstances where I was dealing with a personal grief and then we as a, as a nation, as, uh, as a, a community, uh, a global community, you know, we were dealing with this kind of collective grief and, um, this upending of our lives, um, you know, despite that 2020 actually was a very formative period for me, um, you know, I was allowed the space to grieve and uh, kind of plot, you know, my, my next uh, steps. And um, actually at the end of 2019, I was already kind of considering applying to grad school again, uh, <laughs> you know, and I was kind of thinking that if I did so, I had to be doing it, you know, strategically. Um, of kind of a calculated risk type person. And uh, so I applied to AFI and I didn't get in um, at the, you know, I, this was the, I think, you know, not to be morbid, but my mother passed on December 27th. And I think the application was due January 9th or something of 2020. And somehow I pulled it together in, in, in spite of, and it might've even been a little bit of a distraction at the time, just something to sink my teeth into, you know, while dealing with this kind of like surreal moment. Um, all that being said, I didn't get in, um, and, and, you know, in 2020. So at the end of 2020, I decided I was going to try my hand again. Um, I, I shot a few things during 2020, you know, kind of within the, the, the confines of, uh, the pandemic. And, uh, I actually decided to go back to Howard University, uh, the top of 2021, I did a virtual semester. And during this virtual semester, I got into the thir- uh, the American Film Institute. So, um, you know, the way I kind of see it, and I know I'm, I'm rambling a bit, but uh, this is what I kind of explain to people is in much the same way that doctors kind of start broadly and specialize. That's kind of how I envision this, this path that I took where, you know, in the same way that a doctor would start with maybe biology and then, you know, you, you go and you study, you study uh, maybe, you know, microbiology or whatever the next step may be in, in in the form of a master's program and then you go on into your you know your, your doctorate and you know you go on in uh your residency and things of that nature i kind of envision my creative journey in the same way you know i took this very broad um you know understanding of of academic spaces where i kind of combine engineering and art um and undergrad uh and and found some tie-ins with critical thinking and problem solving and how that informed my creativity. And then I got more specific at Howard University where I understood it culturally. Um, how, what does it look like? What does it mean to be a Black filmmaker? And then I went to the American Film Institute where for me growing up in a, in a somewhat rural community, uh, you know, Virginia, some things have been shot in Virginia, but there's not much of a film industry. Um, I wanted to take the leap into a space that is, you know, industry adjacent, you know, I always tell people that AFI is a a microcosm of the industry in a lot of ways. Um, And I know in order for me to do, be confident in taking that leap, you know, into a a more industry centric space, I wanted it to be very uh, calculated in a way. Um, And so AFI, you know, was, was, the means for me to do so and I could just kind of take all this prior knowledge um, into a space that I felt like could propel me into the next you know chapter of my life as a filmmaker and where I'm no longer kind of juggling these uh, career interests I'm now more so specialized and uh, looking for opportunities to continue to explore that so that's the long and short of it <laughs> no that's beautiful brother uh, thank you so much for thank sharing you. that. That's that's really beautiful. And and my condolences about your mom. Um, thank you. My uh, my my dad actually uh, had acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and wow. um, yeah, he 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 had a poor prognosis. He only uh, 
it was about a year and a few months before he ultimately passed. I, I completely understand. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. And then that definitely, uh, that's a whole, my whole story is a different story, but, um, but uh, yeah, you unpacked a lot there and, you know, thanks for sharing that. So if I just, so I can kind of run through it really quick in a quick summary mm -hmm. is that filmmaking wasn't even something that was on your radar. You know, you were more focused in STEM. You went your journey that way. And then it was actually you collaborating, being a photographer. And what camera did you use yeah, at, that, yeah. at that point? What what camera was that? Oh, wow. Um, so my sister is, she always, she, not joke, it's, it's a, we joke back and forth, but it's a very serious thing. She is the more creative of us two. Um, so she <laughs> already had a camera and I don't remember what Sony she had, but my first camera was a T3i, like a Rebel. Um, Canon. You Canon know, yeah, Canon. Yep, Canon. Canon. Rebel. And then <laughs> I think the, the the progression from there is I think I did a T3i. I think I did a secondhand 50D. And then I did a 5D Mark II. And I still have that. And then I have a Canon EOS R. Um, I'm not really shooting much digital these days. Um, I'm actually shooting a lot of film now just because it forces me to slow down a little bit, but it's very expensive. But yeah, <laughs> photography was kind of, I always tell people that was my my gateway drug um, into what I'm doing now. Okay. All right. So that's cool. So you, you, so you kind of shot on that camera and then you progressed and along your way, you, you, uh, so then you, you actually worked, you went to, you went to, uh, was it high school? You went to high school first? You, you was college when you were focused on STEM. Um, so high school and college, high, high school, school and college. high school. Yeah. My high school, we had majors. So I was a technology major in high right. school and then college, I was a me mechanical engineer. Me mechanical major. engineer. There you go. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so then from there yeah. afterwards, you went into the workforce for, for six years and then yeah. from there, that's when you really got, you you got the bug and you're like, you know what, yeah. there's something here. I'm going to pursue it. And then you went to Howard. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah. for so, master's, but that's broad, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It was a film MFA. So we did, uh, we had editing, we had directing, we had screenwriting, uh, we had theory, um, we had, um, and then obviously there, there are also because of the uh, how we've been a historically black college or univer and university. We took uh, African cinema. We took African American cinema. We also took world cinema. Um, so yes, to answer your question, it was very broad. Um, but we also had cinematography classes, you know. And uh, actually, I, I one of my professors was an AFI alum. So that was kind of actually two. But one was a directing alum, and one was a cinematography alum, and that's kind of how I ended up in the. This is partly how I ended up in the cinematography program at AFI. That's cool. Right on. Right on. So, yeah. um, so but there, it's not like at AFI. It's not like a program specific. It's more like you take all these classes. You get a little bit yeah. of everything. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is interesting because, uh, you and then ultimately went to AFI. But now it's like, okay, the questions that I have are kind of like, well, tell me a bit about the film school. And it's like, whoa, now you, it's kind of like, you have to tell me about both in a sense, right? Like, so like, how was yeah. Howard, you know, what was that experience like going in? Yeah, um, you know, I, I, I have like an immense appreciation for Howard and what it did for me. Um, so many of my family members went to HBCUs prior to, uh, to me. And I didn't, um, I didn't go to HBC for undergrad. So this was also an opportunity for me. To, it was like a, it was a cultural exploration as well. But as far as specific to grad school, and I, I could kind of talk to both of them, speak to both of them in the, in the same um, conversation, uh, partly because I've been asked this question <laughs> many times. Um, and I, I use this analogy, uh, there is a Leica store in DC and I just kind of stumbled into the store one day and there was this like pristine white Leica on sale in Washington, DC. And, um, you know, I, I, I struck up a conversation with the, uh, with the sales rep there. And I asked about this camera and not that I would have bought it myself, but I asked about this camera and, and they explained to me that this was a, a little bit of a case study for Leica and that they released in their three major American markets being DC, New York, and LA. And um, 
the the DC one is was obviously still sitting on the shelves. <laughs> and the New York one, they said, you know, with Tom, I think they eventually sold it. And the LA one sold immediately, right? And it, it sparked this interesting conversation about each of these like uh, metropolises, if you will, about their approach and their understanding of artistic spaces, right? Um, DC is inherently political as the nation's capital. So a lot of the uh, artistry that's coming out of the space does in a lot of ways have this political undercurrent, right? Whereas New York, I always tell new people, New York is very gritty, it's very scrappy. Um, this is where you see a lot of the street photographers, this is where you see like um, kind of this like day in the life uh, approach to artistry, right? And, and in, 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 a lot of, in a lot of ways, it's this cultural melting pot where you just have so many people that have come together from all walks of life in this and that re that's uh, reflective in the art. Whereas LA is obviously very industry specific to, to, to a certain degree, and this is not to other the other arts that are coming out of these spaces, but obviously with LA being ground zero for Hollywood, um, you know, it is a very industry specific way of kind of uh, approaching filmmaking anyway. And I won't generalize. That being said, DC for me was in a lot of ways it was a very this, this is a very political and cultural exploration. Um, the grad program itself is very like a you know boots on the ground you know i always tell people it's by any means necessary you know i have something i want to say i need to say it um and i'm being equipped with the tools and that to your point we're taking editing we're taking writing we're taking directing cinematography how do i take each of these elements and figure out what it is i need to say right um and you know this is where you have kind of this like uh you know, I don't want to say that some of the art and the filmmaking that comes out of the space exists on the periphery, but it's not so much an industry century way of uh, approaching filmmaking, right? Um, so that was very important for me um, because it informed my my approach to filmmaking, and it, it actually tied in very well with uh, my my background in engineering, and that a lot of this was the result of you know, or a lot of filmmaking in that space was a result of problem solving, critical thinking, and, um, you know, figuring it out, you know, whereas uh, AFI, you know, yes, those things apply there as well, but you have these kind of uh, standards and ways of doing that are already in place. Um, you know, AFI has been operating more or less um, kind of in the same way for 50 plus years, correct? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of the structure of the of the program, and so I took what I learned in these these other spaces that were a little bit that was a little bit uh, scrappy, I guess you could say, or gritty, um, and I was able to apply that to AFI and to be able to navigate in this in this space that has an established way of doing, but there are ways to you know uh, express yourself within that. So. I hope that answers your question um, in terms of Howard and what I learned there. And, and uh, you know, again, just being exposed to, you know, the the diaspora as well in terms of we, you know, we watching third world cinema, watching films from Senegalese, and, um, Senegal, I'm sorry, watching Senegalese films and, you know, tying that into the French New Wave and, you know, these things that I didn't understand prior to this space, but then when I go to AFI, that obviously um, has more of an American bent because it is the American Film Institute. Um, I still understood it in a broader context and I was able to bring myself, I think more wholly to the space um, because I understood myself as an artist a little bit better. Yeah, no, that, that's that's so fascinating. Thank you for that. I mean, just to think about, you yeah. know, going to a, an HBC Howard university graduate school for film and then ultimately you know many things happened along in your in your life you know you're talking about your mom the the, the world pandemic and then now mm -hmm. kind of like repositioning yourself and going back to afi so how did that work with howard did you um did that complete or you just kind of transferred how did that work out uh it was just a whole new program um <laughs> I always tell people, they ask me about it, I say, you know, I'm in a lot of debt, but, uh, you know, that's the, you know, that's an investment that uh, I thought was necessary for, for my path and, and who I am and how I want to present. 
Um, so no, nothing transferred. I actually did not finish the program at Howard. Um, I finished all of my coursework. I have, you know, a thesis left. I never did that. Um, it's something that I hope to do actually, um, because I never, I never saw either space as a, like a either or, or, you know, it was for me, it was value in both spaces. Otherwise I wouldn't have done it. And I, I will say, I didn't go to Howard with the, uh, expectation of then going to AFI, but to your point, life happened in a way that, you know, I really couldn't account for back in 2017 when I started like, you know, uh, processing, you know, my creativity and, um, you know, as I'm sure, you know, when, when you deal with grief of a certain level and a certain magnitude, it does kind of force you to reevaluate who you are and, you know, you realize life is, is very short. And so it was one of those things where I said, you know, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it at the level I think I could do it. Um, and I think that's, you know, that was the only way I was going to be fulfilled, you know, is to just go all in, even if it meant to grab programs, you know. That's powerful. And that's a blessing too, though. I mean, you got you got to kind of like the best of both worlds. You know, that's, that's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. And it, And correct me if I'm wrong, but one of your teachers, or you said two of your professors there at Howard, actually were alumni at the AFI. Did they have a role in in encouraging it to like, yeah, this is this is great. This is where you want to go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, I'm gonna shout out Professor Devere and Professor Cush. Um, so uh uh Edith Devere taught me cinematography at Howard. Um, and so we, you know, we had conversations early on and you know, at the time, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, but the more I explored the idea, she was she was totally su supportive. And then uh, Professor Karamu Kush, who actually taught me advanced directing at uh, Howard, you know, he was also very supportive. And, the you know, we had certain conversations um, regarding next steps. And, uh, you know, shout out to both of them because they wrote my recommendation letters <laughs> for AFI. So, you know, they had an indirect and direct, um, you know, impact on that kind of matriculation so um, I'm extremely grateful to them for you know helping me in that process that's beautiful no that's awesome man yeah definitely shout out to them good looking out and and now you're here at your yeah. you went to AFI you just completed right it was it in um it was just actually in August right that's when you graduated yeah in August yeah technically I'm I'm still a student <laughs> but I'm done hands you know we actually have our thesis premiere in a month and a half so hands are, are free of afi but i'm technically still on paper yeah you still on oh because it's december right is when you're going to get it because you yeah have the, the thesis you have to get the, everything turned yeah. in yeah. yep right on yeah. okay yeah. yeah that's cool all right so what about at afi what's one memorable moment that that you took away from your experience being there for two years oh wow or two plus uh, years hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, AFI was, AFI is interesting, um, you know, in, in the way that at Howard, I was kind of introduced to the diaspora. At AFI, I was introduced to the world at large. Um, and I always tell people now I have friends from all over the world. Uh, I think that is the most memorable thing to me. I, you know, my classmates, you know, we have people from Brazil and South Korea and Ar Armenia and like, you know, I think that was, these are people that maybe I would have never engaged with otherwise, you know, because um, I grew up in a very tight knit community where you don't always see people of, of different ethnicities and backgrounds. So um, that was a, a total blessing just to be um, in space with people from all walks of life. And that's something I'll cherish forever. Yeah, I completely agree. It's uh, even though it's the American yeah. Film Institute, it's it's worldwide. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Meeting people from all walks of the world and you're just like, wow, yeah, I'm in uh, Switzerland right now. And I actually know somebody who <laughs> I went to school with from here. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always tell people if I if I when I get to the point where I'm, you know, globe trotting and traveling from country to country, I always have somewhere to lay my head, right? Because yeah. you know people from from all over. So uh, I know that's not specific to film, uh, but I think that, you know, always what, one of the things I always told people at AFI is uh, people over process, people over product. 
mm-hmm. um you know as filmmakers we get very uh we, it's easy to get caught up in the 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 filmmaking um and the process of making films which is a beautiful thing uh it's the most collaborative of all arts but that being said it's not possible without the people and i think having a very uh people first people centric approach to filmmaking um is you know immensely valuable but beyond that i think that's just you know uh uh, more, I don't. I want to say a more honest way, but it's it's a it's a way of navigating life beyond filmmaking that I think was just um, very uh, you know transformative for me to be in space with these people and just kind of have a, a a whole new outlook on life and and what's possible. That's beautiful. That's awesome. And and um, you know, uh, typically, you know, I would start kind of asking about like you know, projects that that, that, that that you're most proud of. But I think because it's so special with your experience of you just turning in your thesis, do you want to talk a little bit about your thesis project? Share with us what that experience yeah, was like? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so thesis was, thesis was, um, it was, it was interesting because um, I worked with the director for, I always say it was my bonus cycle. So I did four cycles as opposed to three because we had fewer DPs and directors. Um, and it was kind of a last minute decision, um, fresh off of winter break, I actually had COVID and it was it was the whole thing. And I was like, I'm still going to take this project. Um, and, you know, I, I'm glad I did because this is the the director and two of the producers that I ended up working with. Um, and, you know, the, the script, the director shared with me fairly early on, um, maybe about, ended up being about a year out from when we ultimately shot. And, uh, it came out of the, for me, um, uh, it's important for me to find a little bit of myself and everything that I kind of, um, you know, lend myself to. Um, and so, you know, the, the script actually dealt with grief. Um, and mm-hmm. unbeknownst to us, it was a it was a three of us actually in, were uh, have lost parents. Three of my thesis team and the 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 I say unbeknownst to us because my director and I'm sure he won't mind me sharing this. He actually lost his father in the the midst of our thesis pro- process, uh, maybe about three or four months after the script was written. But the script itself was about the loss of a parent. And just kind of like the 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 mundanity that comes in like, you know, grief and the in and, and by mundanity, I mean these kind of like uh mundane moments, but this it's absurd to some degree. Like what does it look like to have to go pick up your mom's cat after she passes, you know, mm-hmm. or pick up her car and things of this nature. So um, you know, it just resonated with me in a way. And uh, you know, I felt like it was it was a bit of a full circle moment as well, not to put any uh, you know, to inflate the the importance of the the thesis process itself. Um, but for me, it was interesting to kind of continue to kind of process grief through my artistry. So um, it was actually probably of the many, many, many student films I've been a part of, it was probably the most fulfilling. It was a seamless process. Um, and I think it just came from an honest place for all of us. It was a very, uh, you know, just very authentic um, experience, I, I can say. And it was strong collaboration. And I'm really proud of what we did and looking forward to seeing what's next for all of us. But yeah, that was kind of the, the long and short of it. You know, we shot in the end of April and we actually moved fairly quickly through post. Um, and, and, you know, it was, again, just a fulfilling experience. I, definitely for me, and I would go so far as to say for the team, as a whole that's awesome that's awesome yeah a lot of synchronicity there going on uh so that's that's really cool and how it kind of comes full circle i mean there's nothing better than that when you're making a film for personally things coming together yeah yeah absolutely and and is there any any um you know uh advice that you could give to any type of people that are on the fence about going to film school yeah, of course. Um, you know, I, I, whenever I'm asked this question, I, I always tell people to just kind of uh, first determine what it is they they want. You know, out of uh, I know to say what they want out of life is, is is a bit broad, but particularly at their artistry, 
uh, their creativity and where they envision themselves going. Um, I would, I'm not uh, necessarily, uh, I would never say I'm like a, an advocate of film school, right? Because I think it's such a, it's such a highly specific thing, right? For, uh, and it depends on where the person is at their, at any point in their life. So, uh, you know, my advice would be to just be very uh, specific in their goals for themselves. And, and from there kind of identify like a point the next point or the or an end point if you will and then determine what is the easiest course of action or the I wouldn't even say the easiest and I hesitate to say the most direct because we all know the path is you know far from direct but uh, identifying what is seemingly the most direct path to that point B and then trust and believe in that you know, once you establish your uh, and set your intentions that you will end up wherever you're supposed to be. So I say all of that to say, obviously haven't gone to two grad schools, um, you know, I thought it was in my best interest to do so. Um, and I would encourage anyone who is who is also kind of thinking that grad school is the way for them to, to apply and see what happens. Um, you know, you were rather, spend the $70 on the application fee, you know, and know, you know, whether or not it was, it was something that was possible then to always have this kind of, you know, question in the back of your mind. One of the things that um, I, I hold to is which decision will I regret the least? And then I kind of allow that to inform next steps. So um, yeah, I would definitely encourage people to, if you're on the fence, at least apply. It, you know, and you can always say no if you get in, but you know, you don't want that question to kind of linger in the back of your mind. That's good. That's good. Right on. Right on, Nixon. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, man, mm -hmm. thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. I know we're going to be talking more as this show progresses. Can't wait to hear more about the future and what it holds for you and, and checking out your thesis as it comes out later this year. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to continued conversations.